uh, the symptoms i'd say insomnia lack of interest in food and uh, just this constant feeling of busyness might give you a rush and that's kind of a cycle that that keeps you in that state of burnout and uh, the idea of um, uh, the idea of hustle and work culture that you see in social media propels you to work work in that state state of burnout so that, that may not be healthy for you so you've got to define your normal and your threshold when it comes to uh, your extreme limit so that's that's again that's that's a myth perpetuated when people say you've got to work 100 hours 85 hours 90 hours always that's that's not possible like you you can do little things with with 40 hours you can do those little things well and uh, that's that's enough to lead a happy life a good life if you re- reorient your goals so that's yeah i think that that sums it up for me <clears throat> Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Like, uh, the biggest thing that you said is, you know, the hustle culture. Because, yeah. uh, you know, like in 2020, like there are still some people who are like, uh, so what did you do in 2020? Like, yes, yeah, survive. Uh, you know, so like, uh, so that, uh, you know, in social media, like you see those like a, uh, like a lot. And uh, it's like good that you sort of brought that up. Okay, Dashamati, yeah. uh, what's your, what are your thoughts on? Yeah, so one of the things that I have experienced and I've seen in some uh, other people, you know, with regards to burnout is that they, uh, people who are uh, burned out generally tend to get annoyed at the smallest, you know, bit of work that uh, that, uh, they have actually or they have to do. So even a simple, even the most simple thing like going to get coffee, I mean, I'm telling an experience from my hostel days where uh, you're on the third floor and you have to go get coffee and you're very annoyed at that. Oh, come on. I have to go three floors just to get coffee. So I'll just decide that I don't want coffee at all. So uh, one, one of the uh, things that I'd say symptoms could be getting annoyed at, you know, very simple bits of work. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like uh, uh, when, you, uh, when you have burned out, like you feel like that's like no time. So even the, uh, the minute, uh, minute kind of things like, uh, like, I don't have time for that. Uh, you know, like, uh, so yeah, that uh, definitely happens. Ilaka? Um, good points, both of you. Because uh, it's real. I, I liked what you explained, Vyas, about like, you can do enough things in 40 hours. You don't need to work 80, 90 hours a week. That's, that's a really good point. Um, other symptoms of burnout that I can think of, just irritability, like it was already said, you're just irritated at small things. Uh, I feel like your mind would be going busy all the time like it has no calm or peace or quiet in your mind you're just thinking about the next thing that can be done you're thinking about all the things that haven't been done because you're just overwhelmed with the amount of work that needs to be done because burnout is generally happening because of excess work um probably self-hate might be a symptom of burnout because you are very worn out you're very tired Mm -hmm. you're very exhausted and you still have more to do. So you might be upset at yourself for not being able to do enough. Um, so self-hate, negative self-talk might be symptoms of burnout. Um, constant exhaustion, because you could get eight hours of sleep, but you still wake up tired. You still wake up with a headache. Um, those are all things that I think would be symptoms of burnout. Yeah, you guys, uh, like all three of you, like, I have hit like, most of the ones that I've had on my uh, my list. I actually go, uh, Google this to like, just to, like have like a, uh, like a proper thing. So I'm gonna read them out. So they yeah, are like uh, lack of interest, feeling overwhelmed, development of a escapist mentality. Oh, do you guys know what escapist mentality is? Uh, it's sort of just like you're like trying to like uh, like just like get away from something. So you're like uh, and like basically like you don't want to have some time to like think about and reflect and all those things because you just want like do something uh, at all times to make uh, not think at that time. And you know, sometimes like multitask, some people multitask just like they're not thinking and you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, feeling empty inside, uh, obsession over problems at work or in life, 
a pessimistic outlook on work and life. Uh, physical symptoms uh, sometimes are there as well, uh, and then self doubt, social isolation because you're like you always feel like uh, like talking is like uh, like too exhausting. It's too much work. Uh, it's just easier to just like stay alone and like uh, like do whatever you have to do. Uh, and then sometimes there might be some behavioral changes, uh, chronic headaches, <clears throat> uh, chronic uh, stomach slash. Uh, bowel uh, movement problems and then uh, a complete neglect of uh, personal needs you know like uh, like one of the things where you're like uh, getting the coffee so like, you're like getting some food you know like uh, that kind of thing uh, and then uh, a desire to drop out of society to just like uh, uh, like uh, uh, that comes more from like you know, sort of the self doubt and all that so that uh, so you uh, you tend to think that you're know, like you are probably not valued uh, and like you know you have like a very negative image of yourself so uh, you don't want to show that to other people because uh, they probably currently have a positive image and you don't want to wreck that and uh, uh, that's like sadly the kind of thinking that uh, comes there and then uh, sometimes just a desire to like move away from work or friends just to like uh, See, maybe like, you know, sometimes it, it, it can come from you know, a toxic culture uh, or a toxic uh, environment. So, like research has actually shown that uh, you know, like, depression, the symptoms for depression and the symptoms for burnout are kind of same. Uh, you know, there are very, uh, my, uh, like, very minor differences. So what do you guys think about that? Uh, Ilaki, why don't you start off with this one? That's interesting. That's an interesting observation that research has found. And I think it makes sense. Uh, depression can be caused by a lot of different things. And uh, just thinking about it, extreme work could possibly be a cause for depression. And so in that regard, depending on uh, whether it's caused by work or external sources, the differences between the symptoms of burnout and depression could be very similar. Like they suggested and I think the only way to really differentiate it would be to observe what are the causes of your symptoms uh, can you sit back reflect on how many hours a week you're actually spending on things um, how many classes you're in how many uh, responsibilities you have or if it's um, more like personal life stressors or uh, I mean you could have work related stressors too that could lead to depression i don't know i think that's uh interesting and mm -hmm. makes sense and i'm curious to know um kind of more about the causes of depression in a way to be able to differentiate the causes of burnout versus the cause of depression sounds good sounds good uh Dakshamati? i kind of feel that uh burnout is very naturally linked to depression because burnout is one of like, uh, you know, I would say one of the main causes of depression because a lot of people go into a depressed state because they lose interest in doing stuff that they like doing. And also, uh, they really can't find out what they want to do or what they like to do. So, yeah, for me that, you know, that observation seems very natural. Uh, like, you know, I would put it in a way that uh, uh, what do we say uh, burnout is actually a subset of depression or you know very minor uh, uh, form of depression that's how I'd put it I'm not sure if it's right actually but you know I kind of feel that way well uh, you're not completely wrong because uh, it's, it's an argument here so like even as uh, like you're like, like a bunch of like psychologists like that I looked at, you know, like some people said, like, uh, it's very similar, but they're different. And there are some people said, you know, like, uh, it's just like one of those things where like, it's not, it's like a uh, high associated with it that uh, you you could, uh, you uh, like, just say this is a part of depression as well. And, you know, like, even scholars like argue about it. So like, uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, Vyas, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so it falls under the umbrella. If, if you think of depression as an umbrella, um, uh, burnout would be one of the one of the smaller items within, within that umbrella and when it comes to depression it's, it's very very hard to define it 
because it's it's a depression the symptoms of depression is extreme of anything so it could be extreme lack of sleep or just sleeping for 20 hours a day both of them are extreme ends of sleeping and and that comes that can be anything with food like you could be you could not eat at all or just be eating a lot and uh, they may be symptoms too so and burnout is just that extreme sense of uh, that extreme feeling to work right so that that feeling to work and that's the opposite of not working at all which is something we associate with uh, with depression in action so action in action versus extreme action and extreme action um, uh, the the way extreme action materializes is in the form of a burnout so that's yeah that's how i look at it yeah and yeah i agree yeah there's there's this, yeah it's research so there's nothing to <laughs> argue about that unless i have <laughs> research that suggests otherwise so i don't have any comments about the research it's just interesting yeah <clears throat> uh i and really look at the sample sizes and stuff so like uh, i'm just like going off like uh, like what the abstract said uh but uh, yeah you know like uh, yeah, like you know yeah, like it was well said you know like about uh, like the you know, how like you know like uh, like depression is like you know like a pretty like a really huge concept and so it, it does come, uh, it could probably come under the under umbrella and like it would make sense if that is the case Okay, I want to uh, tell you another research, and then uh, you guys tell me like what, what your thoughts are on that. So the brains of people with chronic burnout look way similar to people who have gone through trauma. And I'll repeat that again. Uh, the brains of people with chronic burnout look way similar to people who have gone through trauma. Uh, Dasham, what do you want to start off with this one? What are your thoughts on this? okay that's actually very interesting because it's such a big statement uh, and i feel that they won't actually just throw it around without proper proof because uh, i think you know trauma is a very big subject or how to say very heavy subject and burnout actually you know in general or people feel that it is not as big as trauma but you know that is actually very interesting because i would have thought otherwise i really couldn't uh, you know it's completely uh, unnatural to me being you know chronic depression being very similar or the brains of people with chronic, chronic depression being very similar to trauma so yeah it's no, very no, no no not chronic depression uh, chronic i mean sorry looks similar to uh, burnout trauma yeah yeah chronic chronic burnout yeah yeah i i mean i use the wrong word yeah okay. so uh, that's how i would say you know it's very very unnatural to me and it's very surprising you know it kind of you know puts to point that uh, burnout is not something which should be taken very lightly because it could lead to uh, damage you know a very or we say very uh, it it could lead to damage which is so similar to trauma which is actually treated very uh, with care so yeah so that is my take from that uh, part of research okay uh, yeah uh, we asked for your thoughts Wait, I have a clarification. I need to. Okay. I need. I want you to clarify something. So you said people who've experienced trauma, yeah. and uh, people who've experienced chronic burnout are experiencing chronic burnout at the time of the study. Uh, it says uh, like the brains of people with chronic burnout. So I would assume yeah, like during. Uh, during. Okay. So during is like what I would assume. because okay. but the like, people who like had trauma is, is something in the past right like it's something that's happened in the past yes because your yeah, trauma is like an objective thing that you know like uh, you have experienced whereas like uh, yeah. so it's like okay. i went through a traumatic experience mhm okay so and what did they start? like is just the brain scan of yes of the, uh, the brain like scan just... like look uh, like way way similar okay yeah the uh, i mean the point the dakshinamurthy mentioned about it being something that uh, that doesn't strike you at first and uh, more and more you think about it you you may f- you may find similarities between the two uh, may not be outward in terms of how they uh, how they uh, go about their lives people who experience trauma might might just have a better 
a better sense of uh, direction or they've, they've healed through that or they've gone through the five stages of grief and uh, have some sort of understanding about uh, about how to handle their uh, their health and emotional well-being and the people who are experiencing burnout are in that very state of putting their putting themselves under pressure uh, so voluntarily or or through external forces uh, so it's it's yeah it's it's a matter of yeah people who've gone through that and sort of maybe handled it uh strongly in a positive manner and others who are still healing from from that trauma so yeah very very fascinating research like uh it's pretty interesting like what the what like shanwar thing guys have already observed uh that burnout can cause similar ba- brain changes as people who have experienced trauma because uh with people with trauma they have like certain triggers that can force them to relive painful memories and feel like they're trapped in the situation again that's kind of what PTSD is like so you also mentioned that earlier escapism is a uh the symptom of burnout and so trying to escape the things that are causing you pain that seems very similar between people who might experience might have experienced trauma and people who are experiencing burnout uh so that's a really interesting observation that if the brains are the same and i thought vias brought up an important question of if the people overcome their chronic burnout they find the ways to give themselves enough care patience and not work themselves hard will their brain go back to being what we consider normal or will it still look like a person who's gone through trauma uh that would be an interesting follow up study i would like to see the results on but uh it makes sense depending on if it's chronic burnout then the person is kind of traumatized in a way from just their sheer work um work ethic work work demands uh so it makes sense and uh surprising scary um for me uh, i have found it very interesting as well like uh, but uh, like i remember like uh, like we we had a tra- uh, like a trauma discussion like earlier in one of those meetings so like trauma co- could be of like three things where like uh, there are three types of trauma and one of those types was like uh, you know like uh, like a slow and steady but like you know like uh, like for a long time kind of thing where like uh, something is affecting you so like the i didn't i didn't made the connection but the moment i read it i was like ah yes you know it makes sense uh cuz you know like i like i could see you know like how the dotted uh, dots connected cuz you know like uh, like it was uh, could be like yes uh, the the key word is like the chronic burnout and not just like burnout uh, so the chronic burnout uh, sort of means that, you know like it's happened like multiple times enough to like be called as chronic uh so uh, you know like i don't know how like uh, like how you're diagnosed with chronic burnout uh like you know like uh, like like how uh, how that process goes but uh, but if someone has diagnosed it as a chronic burnout i would uh, i kind of feel like i get why like it looks this way we asked you have some reason yeah. yeah so i mean the point you mentioned about chronic burnout so the, i i think the way they I, i'm not sure but i'm uh, this is this is what i what i think happens so the way they define chronic burnout is with a baseline so a person working 60 hours a week that might be their baseline since they were 18 and they've had a perfectly normal life till they were about 28 right and something struck something significant happened in their personal life and they wanted to work more and uh, to avoid something or to run, to go towards something and they started working at 100 100 hours a week or 80 hours a week from 60 to 80 so that could be if the, if that happens multiple times over that person's lifetime that would fall under chronic but let's say if someone has been working at 80 hours a week like elon musk right probably more since he was 10 or 12 right those people have incredible capacities to or at least mask that that pain in some level and if they they are working more than that with no sleep at all then that's a, that's a different case so i think it starts with a baseline so when you say chronic it's not a specific number is what i'm trying to get at yeah 
Uh, yeah, that makes sense. You know, like uh, I would sort of assume it is like you know, like uh, like you know, sort of every year, like you know, like uh, like thirty months, like extra, and uh, like somehow, like you know, like it went like that. Then, like it's sort of how you like you know, like, even with weather, uh, you know, like if you suddenly come from like a tropical place to like a like you know, like a place with snow, then uh, it feels very cold. Whereas like people have just been living in the winter, like yeah, it feels cold, but like once you wear uh, wear the layers, it's like ah, eh, it's not too bad. Yeah, you know, uh, so like uh, it makes sense what you're saying. It's like dealing with burnout, and you know, like that, that's this one. Like uh, you know, there's actually like a bunch of things, and then like uh, with with each of those things, uh, you know, like uh, I uh, like I wanted uh, like actually let me ask that question to everyone first, and then I'll read mine. And when I, when I read mine, uh, like we can talk about. Uh, Like, like you, if uh, that's something that you see, like uh, that makes sense to you, and if if it does, like why? It would make sense because you know, like uh, I I see them and it it makes sense. But uh, like you know, like yeah, like it'll be fun. Uh, anyway, so like, uh, what do you guys like? What do you guys think you're know, dealing with burnout? Like, what are the ways? Uh, let's start with Ella. Yeah. This question is dealing with burnout, right? Yes. Uh, awareness is the first step. Right. Be aware that you're burning out. Recognize the symptoms. Realize that it's a problem. Um, because you could just think that ah yes, this is normal. This is what college must be like, you know. Uh, but recognize that it is burnout. Then, um, honestly, the internet. Ask like find like look up different ways to deal with burnout. Um, I would suggest or obviously go to a mental health um provider to kind of get more help with it. You can also go to just wellness. Um. Providers in a way, just like therapists who can help you with like your life stuff, because um, burnout can also probably be treated by them. It's not like a mental illness; it is a it's a current problem. I think it can be treated with just a therapist. Doesn't have to be a psychologist. Um, find solutions, like just whether it's forcefully giving yourself more me time, reevaluating all of your priorities, dropping different responsibilities. I did that um, personally. Like I dropped. I was the vice president on one of the clubs, and I was like, I have too many things on my plate. I'm leaving the position. Um, so dropping the responsibilities you have because it's generally lack of free time that leads to burnout. So doing that. Um, what else? Prior changing priorities because currently your priorities probably work, but your priority should be getting three meals a day, getting eight hours of sleep, consistent sleep schedule, like. Reorganize your priorities so the things that are better for your wellness are prioritized first. Then, I guess continue to be aware of the issue that you have experienced burnout. You can experience it again, and how to recognize if it's happening again. So you can reevaluate, reevaluate your plan, change your responsibilities, find out better ways to like work efficiently, not harder, but smarter in a way, so you can spend more time for yourself and it's realistic. Be genuinely accepting of how much work you can handle because some people like via said can like work crazy amounts of time and it's okay for them but like be accepting of yourself whatever work you can handle and that it's okay to be stressed and um you shouldn't feel bad for feeling burnt out when other people appear to be doing so well so just be accepting of where you are and then be conscious of okay like am i keeping at where i need to be and reevaluating your plan if you feel like burnout's happening again that was a lot that was a really good answer though you, you almost said every single thing that i've listed on my list so like uh, and you added some more as well like so like, that was like really good uh so yeah uh, i don't want to like say more to that uh yes yes you're muted it's going to be very hard to follow that <laughs> follow follow that answer uh yeah so i mean since she's mentioned uh pretty much everything about <laughs> about dealing with burnout <laughs> i i'd like to take a different uh, i'd like to take a different route to answer this question so with this pandemic there's been cases of doctors being burnt out so we're we're looking at a population we're looking at a subset of the population who are uh kind of have that obligation within themselves to serve the community to serve serve the country and uh, work extended hours 20 24 hours a day and there's i mean there's stories of doctors who haven't left the hospital 
they probably have the hospital 3 hours every day and they they come back they come back. that's that's all that's all they do and this is not an exaggeration and there's people who who lost lives as people who quit their clinics the people who shut down their clinics because of um, you know uh, because of not getting enough elective surgeries within the us so that's that's how a lot of clinics make their money and with people being uh, hesitant to go to hospitals they've quit for uh, financial reasons they've quit for emotional reasons not getting that so it's it's important to bear that in mind while we're still in the middle of this pandemic although if we've, we've had the vaccine it's 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 good to keep that focal point as well when we think of burnout so, so the, those are people who are getting burnt out because of this uh, unfortunate situation we're in it's it's of not it's not of anyone's fault and it's it's sometimes they feel like they don't have a choice like i'm a doctor and i'm the only doctor in this uh, country or i'm the only doctor in this town who's qualified to do this so if i quit there's no one else so we don't face that in our lives so when uh, when uh, so i've actually given up positions as well when i was in college so when i did that or when people give away their when they say i don't want to be the vice president or president of this organization there's other people to take that up uh, can you uh, can you just give a re- recap of vyas and dakshamati sir to be sure. the recording uh vyas was talking about um how doctors are experiencing burnout during the pandemic and they are obligated to do their work since maybe they're the only doctor in their town or they're the only person who knows what to do or whatever it is so um when you're experiencing burnout but you have the obligation to do your work it can't it'll prevent you from being able to drop the responsibility because in clubs um even if you drop your position there are other people to take it up but as in, like you know right now doctors in the pandemic are being overworked and they don't have anyone else to take the job for them and some of them are having to close their clinics for maybe personal reasons emotional reasons financial reasons a lot of different things um and that is stressful and can it's definitely caught giving them burnout um dakshan murthy brought up how uh we got the notes real quick so you can do like a day or two of complete reset to deal with burnout in a way just do things that you generally enjoy without being obligated to do those things so that you it helps you regain energy or motivation to continue doing what you need to as a way to deal with burnout mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I think she have both. Uh, so like uh, with like Vyas thing, you know, like uh, it, it is like alarming to me that you know, like uh, like even before the pandemic, you know, like uh, every doctor, you know, like when they were re- resident and like things like that, they've gone through uh, something like those 24 hour shift. Uh, and that's just like a normal thing to them. It's not even like an alarming thing. Uh, so like, you know, like that to me is like a, just like, uh, like a disturbing thing that, you know, like uh, that you're putting someone through that. Uh, and then you know like uh, so like you know in the pandemic situation it's even worse where like uh, usually there's like a uh, lot of people in the sea a uh, lot of fishes in the sea but in like uh, like in a pandemic situation like everybody uh, be like uh, we have this many fishes only you know like uh, so like we really have to like uh, work with it uh, and like uh, you know like uh, do what you must do and so when they have problems and funny though like when i was like looking at like burnout uh, when i was like googling it uh, that was exactly what i was saying to like Like I tried to put like mental health and burnout and then everybody was saying, you know, like, uh, uh, like a lot of men, uh, mental health, uh, like psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, like they were all having burnouts and like, though I was, I was receiving stats for like, uh, like different countries and I was like, okay, um, not exactly what I was going for. Uh, and then, you know, like some of the, some of the thing I was like getting for like doctors, uh, I just, I just put health. Uh, so, uh, yeah, definitely agree with that. And, um, what dasham what he said uh, like funnily like you know like uh, like you know like in in history like we used to like work every day like uh, and then like we was found out then you know like yeah people are burning out and then like uh, like that's how like the concept of like, like you know like sunday and all that like started happening where uh, you know like yeah man we got to chill like you know, we're doing too much you know so like uh, so i we have definitely made some improvements there so uh, and also i don't know how true this story is cuz you know like i've read it before uh, but uh, i might uh, like it, it could be like some joke as well but i'm hoping you know like like where i read it like it's a truth cuz you know like if that is the case uh, that means that we can definitely improve in these things uh, and you know like uh, 
like we are putting a lot more effort into like uh, work life balance now uh so yeah uh, that's what i have to say anyways so, like let's uh, let's go through the, the list that i have so uh, the ones i have is like take time off that's one of the basic things like you know like i guess everyone said it uh redefining values and goals you know sort of like uh, maybe uh, like are you doing things like uh, maybe you're doing everything towards like those goals and then like maybe that sort of is the problem where like, you know like that goal is like, you know like too big right now you have to like work with something as a smaller goal and to reach that goal like a bit later something like that uh or maybe like uh, like you know like you are not at a great place so like, you know you have to like uh, just like you know pace yourself and then sometimes changing your circumstances maybe like switching to a new job uh breaking up with your uh, romantic partner something like that uh or just like you know like uh, maybe like moving to a new place like uh, living in a different place uh sticking to the basics that was something that ila kya said you know like i mean she said a lot of things uh, but uh, you know like, uh, like like making sure you sleep uh, like you know like regularly for 7 uh, hours 8 hours uh, thing we have done like research on like sleep as well uh, i mean not not me but you know like uh, we have talked about research on sleep as well where uh, like india is actually the second lowest uh, like in the world uh, in terms of the number of sleep that we get uh, that was one of the posts that we made in social media like long time back uh, and then uh, next one is like you know setting boundaries so sometimes you know like it's like sort of uh, people tend like hey man like uh, like do uh, do more work you know like uh, what the hell you know like that kind of thing uh, so some uh, those times you have to like tell them like so, like politely sort of like back off and be like hey like i'm going through something uh, it could be a burnout and uh, to, uh, like for like uh, to get to a point where like we do uh, like sort of like reset or somehow you know like uh, get to a point where the burnout is like manageable you know there's something that needs to be done and you know, you telling me like you know like uh, do this do that like not going to help me and not going to make it productive then the final thing you know like uh, i'm guessing everybody said it which is like ask for help sometimes you know you have like uh, meet a therapist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist or uh, like some mental health professional because uh, they they really do know what, uh, what the best thing to do is uh, at the end of the day webmd is like uh, webmd psych to go they're good but like uh, like they won't be like you know like centered to you like that can only be done if you actually meet someone So, what are your thoughts on like uh, this thing, this yeah. list? Uh, let's start with Dilakar. Do we share this chat? Thank you. Because wait, we asked one to you, Sanjay. Okay. Uh, thank you for explaining all that because you just reminded me of a time when I was like hella burnt out that I wasn't thinking about at the beginning of this call. Because um, one of my clubs, we were planning the state level tournament for a competition. and that required all kinds of massive effort so the last 3 months before we were working nonstop and setting boundaries and reaching out to help were things that i know from personal experience can definitely help because i was responding to messages and emails literally every time every single minute of the day i'd be in class i'd get an email and i'd have to reply because we needed things to get done quickly so i was constantly working for this club and it was extremely exhausting extremely tiring i definitely cried a lot and so i did reach out to That's why I mentioned like the wellness thing because we on our university campus we have um people called wellness mentors offered through like the gym um facility in a way. So I spoke to one of those people and I was like I am suffering and uh, they told me they gave me a tactic to set boundaries of like you will only do science olympiad in the oh, well I just exposed what club it was. It was science olympiad. Um I I could only do work for it in these hours of the day. like i will not do it at any other time um and that definitely helped me especially towards the end of it but even then at the time like the obligation that you mentioned like you you i didn't really have a way to get away from it cuz the president dropped the club and so no one else could drop the club we all had to stick with it through the end and uh so we had to do it there was a lot of work so like i couldn't really follow what she suggested but it definitely gave me a lot more peace of mind to just say like i'm not going to reply to things before this time in the morning i'm only going to work on stuff related to this at this time of day and not at other times it was hard to follow but it definitely helped at the time um yeah so that's what i have to say setting boundaries with time and uh reaching out to people definitely helps
Uh, again, like we don't have a lot of time, so I'll just like, go through it. Everyone g- give their uh, thoughts ac- along with their uh, closing thoughts on burnout, and then uh, we can go to the final thing. Uh, okay, uh, the reason for burnout is usually like values, like conflict. So you're like your values and your partner or your company's values. So you have sometimes conflict, and so that time uh, you sort of have a problem. Uh, so uh, like. Uh, at that kind of thing that's why like you know, one of the ways of dealing with uh, with uh, burnout is how like redefining your values and goals and oh sometimes you know it's just like you know changing your circumstances you know like uh, if the values like is very important to you then hey, hey man i got to go mm-hmm. uh and then uh, the next thing is uh, uh lack of control you know sort of like sometimes uh, like uh, burnout comes from you know like having too many things to do and then you don't really have control over it and you know how like uh, like uh, Elaka's experience uh, because the president left left like you know, she didn't really have like a uh, control over like maybe I want to get out too you know like uh, like you know somebody had to like uh, make sure the ship doesn't sink and uh, she had to take the responsibility so sometimes you know the lack of control is where uh, it comes third thing is uh, in- insufficient reward uh, you know like you're doing the work but then like nobody's like recognizing you like uh, uh, like. They don't really understand the amount of work you're putting, uh, and that could be in a relationship and work as well. Uh, and it's very important because uh, usually, like burnout is associated with work. It could be with relationships as well, and like proper communication has to be done. Uh, like if that happens, the fourth thing is workload. That's like more of a, like a work thing, you know, like uh, uh, with like sort of like what we are saying. You know, like, if you work for like a really really long time, then uh, that could probably be uh, be the problem. And even if you're like getting like some work done because of it, uh, or it could also be like a student thing where you're like uh, you're studying for a really long time and uh, you're burned out before the exam, and like, that can happen. And uh, then unfairness, which is uh, if like you're doing some work and then like uh, there's like partiality or bias towards someone else, and they're getting the rewards. Uh, like you have the burnout because you know like uh, your interest is suddenly not uh, like gone, but at the same time. Uh, your interest and then the amount of work you're doing would not be proportional because of that. So uh, even the amount uh, the amount of work that you're doing, like objectively, might not be a lot, but then because of your uh, like huge lack of interest uh, due to like uh, this unfairness, uh, you might have a burnout. And then the uh, the last thing, which is uh, something that uh, we didn't speak about in this, which is like being unsafe with like your environment, with your community, because you're like uh, if you're unsafe, you're like uh, like that could definitely like burn you out because you're like you're literally like uh, like you're thinking about your life or you know like uh, uh, like something like smaller you know like uh, like maybe some violence could happen and those kind of thing and those are things that you know like uh, like that makes you like like hyper aware and uh, and you like you could like uh, have a burnout due to that as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on each of these? Um, and start off with uh, Dashamuthi. Yeah. So yeah, I'm. Those are all, all of those are actually very very good points that uh, you've mentioned, Akshay. And I'll actually like to emphasize on the uh, you know third point. I think I'm not sure with the number, but uh, you know on the point that people get burned out because they don't feel rewarded. You know, I feel that is one of that is probably one of the most important reasons for burnout because you know. Uh, you know, we've all felt that some uh, somewhere in our lives where we put in so much effort and suddenly when you don't see the reward, you completely lose interest in that or you feel like you're never going to do it again because you've already put in so much effort and you got nothing for it. So I think that is one point that I uh, I thought I'd emphasize and, uh, you know, uh, you know, mark its importance. And uh, uh, the other point of one of being, yeah, I guess people should... So, you know, probably normalize having burnouts to in work or even in school because when, when it's normalized, people will understand what you're going through without having to explain, you know, without having to explain to them what you I mean, explain to them about your burnout uh, experience because, you know, it's very hard to explain a burnout. You can say, okay, you know, there's always the good old reliable, I'm just tired, mm-hmm. but... Uh, you know, it's very complicated to explain, and I think people should uh, get. I mean, it should burn up is something that should be normalized, especially in school, because yeah, we have, all of us have gone through gone through burnout, and the most I guess uh, uh, 
uh, all of us share uh, one one thing that we share is that all of our experiences are through school so yeah that is another thing that i wanted to tell uh vyas okay yeah i, I didn't want to interrupt him so the the, the point that he mentioned about uh, uh working working hard so the idea of surviving right so the, this this idea that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger right so that that kind of uh, if you, if you hold that thought for too long it can it can uh, prove to be uh, dangerous to your lifestyle so it doesn't have to kill you to uh, to make an impact in your life like like uh, like the brains can show people who have been through tra- trauma are not dead but uh, they they've been through enough and uh, there's, there's a lot of healing that needs to be done so yeah the, the idea of constantly working kind of needs to be redefined and so i'd like to end yeah all of you all of you have already mentioned pretty much everything i had in mind so i'd like to end with a quote that i just found by uh, uh, sam keen so i don't know this person so i was just looking up quotes on burnout and this was really good so burnout is nature's way of telling you you've been going through the motions uh, your soul has departed you're a zombie a member of the walking dead a sleepwalker false optimism is ad- is like administering stimulants to an exhausted nervous system so yeah uh, pr- pretty deep in terms of you know the uh, the zombie part kind of uh, i i felt that you know <laughs> the, the, uh, that's that's a very something that i connect with in terms of feeling it in the past so Yeah, that's why i picked picked that quote mm. yeah that quote does like some talk about uh ilakya uh a lot of good points about different things um i also like the point that dr murthy emphasized about how if there's a specific thing that's burning you out you kind of or like you're not getting the reward for what you're doing that'll make you one not want to continue anymore and to feel burnt out from it and i also had the realization that if you give more than you get that's probably when burnout happens because if you give a lot but you also get a lot you might feel like rewarded satiated it gives you purpose but when you don't get it in return in a way that might be another cause of burnout yeah yeah these are like very good very good points uh for my closing thought like i just want like uh, like you know like lead with you know, like after this uh, call sort of think about like your what you shouldn't say to a person with burnout uh there's something that we didn't discuss but uh, you know like that is like a, like an important thing like to you like is uh, like when you were going through a burnout like all of some things that you didn't want others to say and you're not answered like is like think about it